Hi, this is Boris Adrian, and today I wanted to show you a quick screencast about Eclipse IoT. Eclipse IoT is a collection of open source tools for the development of Internet of Things solutions. In this quick presentation, I'm going to focus on what the Internet of Things is and how Eclipse can help you build solutions for it. And in a second part, I'm hoping to show you a nice little demo how Eclipse MQTT components can help you to quickly build messaging solutions. As I'm not going to show myself here, just a brief word about what I do. I'm an independent Eclipse IoT enthusiast. I have no other involvement with Eclipse IoT, which also means that I don't have to sell you anything. I'm just giving you my opinion. I usually tweet about IoT and analytics because this is where my business activities are. And I also write a blog at iot.ghost.io. So the Internet of Things is going to be huge. We're going to connect everything from cars to power plants to the electrical grid. We're going to have a smart home, wearable devices. So this slide here is shown an exemplary architecture of an IoT or M2M solution. So IoT is for Internet of Things, M2M is machine-to-machine -machine communication, which is a sort of industrial term for doing things. So on one side here, we have the end devices. So those are small, low-power embedded devices typically that are built into a sensor, into an actuator, down to a smart appliance like a washing machine that's going to be internet connected at some stage. So then there is a connection to something that we call a hub device. So that's essentially a radio receiver. It's usually powered and it has a internet connection that's faster and it can forward information from these many different devices here of which we're going to have hundreds or thousands uh, to then relay this information to the cloud. So we're coming from very small devices that probably generate very little data to hub devices that agglomerate this data and send millions of data packets to the cloud or some other beefy computer where backend solutions then provide services. So for example, front ends um, on a mobile or something for the web or to run analytics on. One can think about IoT solutions in terms of ecosystems, components, or standards and protocols. And Eclipse IoT offers entry points on all of those. In the ecosystem level here, we look at projects like Fordiac, Eclipse NeoSCADA, RISE B2J. So those are all components that can be taken to build complete industrial end-to-end -end solutions. On the component level, we have software that can run on embedded devices and facilitate their function. We have components that would run on a hub or gateway device to facilitate the message forwarding, etc. And there's even some solutions that run in the cloud and provide the functionality that's needed to provide services or analytics. Personally, I haven't seen any deployments of Fordiac, RISE, or NeoSCADA, so all of these from the industrial ecosystem in the wild. However, it's quite frequent to see deployments of Concierge, Eclipse Cura, Eclipse Smart Home, or any of those messaging protocols in the wild. It's well worth to visit iot.eclipse.org and get an overview about all of the different projects. It is also good to know who's behind many of the IoT projects at Eclipse. So we have companies like Sierra Wireless, Bosch, Canonical, DC Square. So these companies develop common standards and common solutions that other people in the field can build up on. These companies invest time and resource in the development of common components that can be reused by everyone 
in turn that allows them to focus on their actual business. The power of the Eclipse IoT ecosystem can best be appreciated by looking at an example. Here we are looking at the offerings around end devices. Suppose we have a couple of end devices that could be a connected car, the light bulb or a washing machine. These end devices have properties. The properties can be annotated in Vorto. Vorto provides a programming language independent device description that can be stored in the Eclipse model repository. Vorto code generators can then translate these models into classes, for example, for Python or Java. A programmer can use these components in the favorite programming language using the Eclipse IDE. There's a solution called Hawkbit. It takes care of the deployment of any developed code to hundreds or thousands of different devices at the same time. On the end device itself, we might be looking at a project like Edgy. It's a hardware abstraction layer that refers to simple descriptions like we have here, use radio without having to take care of the immediate implementation that is being run on the system. On the device, we have Concierge. Concierge is a small footprint of CI core for Java. Here we would also have projects running like Californium, which is an implementation of the CoAP protocol. Before we can dive into the live demo, I first wanted to give you a brief introduction into the MQTT protocol. MQTT is for message queue telemetry transfer and we're going to show its application using Eclipse Mosquito, which is a message broker, and Eclipse Paho, which is a set of libraries for different programming languages. MQTT sits on top of TCP IP and the default port for MQTT is 1883. The centerpiece is the message broker, here in that case Eclipse Mosquito. If you're running it on a Linux system, you might get away with a simple sudo apt-get install mosquito and then you're up and running. The idea behind MQTT is that you have publishing devices that can publish information under a so-called device topic. The topic is very much like the subject of an email. On the subscriber side, all the devices that subscribe to a particular topic, here in this case, home temperature or home humidity, would then receive that information instantaneously. The message format typically is the topic as well as the payload, the actual value of the measurement. What we will see in a moment is how a library like Paho can allow us to connect to an MQTT broker, subscribe to messages, publish messages, and we will see how callbacks are triggered upon receipt of a topic. Okay, now it's demo time. So this is a quick Python script. We import Paho MQTT publish as publish in Python. And issuing a message is just as simple as publish.single. We take the topic from the command line. On the other side, we see our client scripts that will connect to the broker to on localhost and essentially loop forever. And whenever there is a topic that we are interested in, again, communicated through the command line, we will spit out that particular message. We fire up Mosquito, the broker. We fire up the client script. Here in that case, we are interested in my topic. In the other window, we're interested in a different topic. So let's call that topic one, two, three. Now, with our publisher, script, we send messages essentially to nobody. 
Now we specify a topic that is known. And now we are seeing here the topic was recognized and the default message, I'm the payload, is being spit out. So effectively, you could imagine to run this and use one script that continuously dispatches messages to, to other scripts. So it's useful not only in the IoT context. So in terms of a status, it has to be admitted that some Eclipse IoT projects are still a little bit rough around the edges. That concerns projects like Warto, Horkbit, or Hono. Things like Eclipse Cura, that collect information on a hub, or Eclipse Smart Home, which is already an entire solution for the Smart Home Arena, they just work. Messaging just works. So that's all great. On my wish list for Eclipse IoT would be more components for user-facing UX and UI stuff, tools for data analytics and data visualization, and in many cases, improvements on the documentation for end users. Unfortunately, I haven't used any of the offerings around the industrial IoT, so I can't really comment on those. You can get to Eclipse IoT at iot.eclipse.org. You can follow them at Eclipse IoT. I also recommend following Benjamin Kabe and Ian Skerritt, who are the bright minds in the leadership team of Eclipse IoT. And if you like what you saw, you can visit me on my blog at iot.goes.io. And I'm Boris Adrian on Twitter. Bye.